Sri Krishna Prem's luminous commentary. We are trying to find the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita as it is relevant even today to each one of us. We discussed about the background in details which we find in the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The first chapter is therefore not to be skipped over or looked slightly or with not much of a reverence, but this background is essential for the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. The teaching is not necessary for one who is leading an easy-going life, who has no tension, who has no crisis, and therefore he doesn't need any guidance. So this is a very essential thing about which Sri Krishna Prem also and other commentators too have tried to awaken the true spirit of enquiry in us. Now, we find at the end of the first chapter, we have entered into the second, but we must always remember, look back, that in surrounded by desolation on all sides, this is the spirit. There is desolation on all sides. The soul has no alternative but to turn within itself and seek there the divine teacher. Those who have got the text kindly follow the verses of the second chapter. You find that the Arjuna is finding himself in utter desolation. This desolation, finding no anchorage anywhere, is completely lost. Kindly read the verses, you need not much of commentary or anything. It comes out of his heart, a cry, I don't understand. Nacaita the Bidma, etc. I'm not repeating the verses, they are with you. And then he surrenders. Surrenders to the divine teacher. Shishasteham shadhimang tvam prapannam. This prapannam, this is the surrender. He lays himself at the feet of the Master and seeks the guidance. Unless the guidance is sought in this way, earnestly and sincerely, the guidance does not come. So this is very important. And again, as Sri Krishna Prem so nicely puts it, the teacher must be found within itself. Turn to itself and seek there the divine teacher. As we find later on, Ishvara Sarva Bhutanang Hiddeshe Arjuna Tishtati. He is seated in every human heart. We must seek the teacher there. Ask for the guidance from him. And then we have already covered, and again reminding you, the first step that the teacher asks us to do. If only there is patient perseverance, a new and divine knowledge is felt obscurely stealing into the soul and lighting up 
dimly the darkness within. That is why so luminously Sri Krishna Prem points out from his own experience a true seeker always finds that dimly the darkness within is being lighted up. But before that, one condition must be fulfilled. Patient perseverance. So as we already discussed, the first command from the Lord is Tang Stitikshaswa Bharata Don't be so much upset. Bear it up. This is perseverance. This patient perseverance is the first step. As I've already pointed out to you, so this patient perseverance, if that is taken up, as the Lord himself asks us to observe, first of all, this is the second command. If you can make a string or a garland of the commands, in the second chapter, third verse, there is the first command. And now, in this fourteenth verse, is the second command. Tang titikshasva bharata. With this, what happens? Obscurely stealing into the soul the divine knowledge. But if there is tumult, if we are so very much upset, then we can't hear the divine voice. So this perseverance is necessary is the very first step. But where can I get the knowledge? Again, Sri Krishna Prem reminds, the true knowledge is to be found within the self. That which is merely derived from books or hearsay is no real knowledge. We must get the knowledge directly from our own hearts. As I've already said, the teacher is seated there. So this real knowledge, a true knowledge, within the self is that which is immortal. Within us is something that is eternal. So we must seek that eternal within or inside ourselves. So again we come between the two poles, within and without. Outside it is so much of strife so much of noise, so much of strife. But within or inside it is all calm. And therefore, what we have to do is to first have some patience, perseverance, and try to be in touch with the true source of knowledge. So what is the nature of the knowledge that the Lord or the teacher first gives us? For that we have to look first of all in verse 13. Verse 13 it speaks of the two things which we have through our ignorance, got muddled up. One is Deha, the other is Dehi. Dehi knows min yatha Dehe, Kaumaram Yauvanam Jara, Tatha Dehantara Praptir, Dhiras Tatra Na Mujyati. So this verse contains the essence of the Vedantic teaching or the supreme teaching 
अब दे भगवत गीता वेट फर्स्ट फाइंड आउट दैट द ड्यूएल आर इन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ श्री कृष्ण प्रेम इज विद इन इज समथिंग सेपरेट फ्रॉम द मैटर इन विच ही ड्यूएल्स सो हियर इज अ ड्यूएल आर एंड हिज ड्यूएलिंग this is the first thing to be meditated upon the dwelling is the deha and the dweller is the dehi someone has come to dwell for a fixed period of time within this dwelling we are all inhabitants of this tenement of clay so this mud hut that will break up some day but we are here as dwellers for a fixed period of time but through our ignorance we have become completely imprisoned within this dwelling and think that the dweller and the dwelling are the same thing so this must be broken first of all therefore sri krishna prem continues after some time you will find the sentences by yourself i picked up one or two here and there he says forms and personalities come and go inevitably forms and personalities come and go inevitably but that with a capital t that which lies behind them all can neither come nor go for it with a capital i forever is both i and s with capital letters is for it forever is other things are coming and going and there is one thing which is again it reminds all form is transient and must pass away while all that is real again with a capital r is eternal and perishes not throughout the ages then that which does not perish throughout the ages this is called nitya nitya vastu vivek in vedanta with this starts the inquiry we have discussed many times this word viveka viveka means discrimination separation to separate the grain from the chaff so this discrimination this is the first essential thing non discrimination that is the root of all misery and the nail is hit on the head at the very first opening they he knows many yatha dehe so dehe and dehi we must first separate these two things i hope you all remember that the gita begins with attention and the tension arises because of the involvement involvement means identification we all get identified with this body and thereafter we establish relations through this body with others this is called me and mine 
by me we mean this body and by mind the other things related to the body. Arjuna was in confusion because he thought that he was that particular person or that body named Arjuna and then he got involved with his own kinsmen who thought that they are mine. How can I fight them? So, therefore, as I just told you, the Lord hits him on the head by taking the real root of all his entanglement, all his confusion, and all his involvement, all his misery. This is known as Chid Achid Granthi. This is the knot. This knot is to be untied. We must all be very serious about this knot. Because there lies the crux of the problem. Because many people question, we also feel sometimes confounded that Arjuna's question was very simple. I won't fight with my own kinsmen. The Lord could have given a direct answer that yes, you should fight because they are in the wrong. They are depriving you of the kingdom, this and that. And they will suffice. But here the Lord wants to completely root out the very ignorance out of which this confusion has arisen. He doesn't want to give a piecemeal solution, just touching it on the surface alone. But he goes very deep to the very root of the problem. So therefore, as I told you, many people question why all these high-sounding philosophy or call it self-knowledge that is being taught to Arjuna. Because otherwise, again the confusion will come. Again he will be beset with another problem. Again he will not find his way out. So the Lord is giving out. And the very first opening, as I just told you, you must get out of this knot. First find out the forms, personalities. Don't cling to them as permanent. They will go. But there is behind them something which forever is. This is Nitya and Anitya. This is Deha and this is Dehi. It is on this bedrock that the entire edifice of the Bhagavad Gita is based. We must in search of the eternal, of that Nitya. And if we want to get hold of the Nitya, we must by and by purge ourselves, get rid of that Anitya. Only then we can get hold of the Nitya. Now the process starts. How to untie the knot? What a wonderful way the Lord has given. So you find if you Consult the verses. He first of all says, after this second command in verse 14, Tang Stitik Shaswa, he gives a hint that you can get out of this knot, of this tangle, if you can become Dhira. Very next verse in the 15th, Sama Dukha Sukhang Dhiram. Why are you so much tossed by this duality? Sometimes happiness, sometimes misery, sunshine and shadow. Get out of it. Remain calm. Sri Krishna Prem rightly comments, 
only in perfect poise and harmony can the soul blossom and be developed. We have heard that these two are absolutely separate things, deha dehi, nitya anitya, but what will all this avail of us? All this high sounding philosophy or words we have been hearing or we have been reading, that doesn't help at all. So the first step necessary, as the patience or perseverance, they are after perfect poise and harmony. We discussed at the very outset that all problems are problems of harmony. How to establish that harmony? How to establish that poise? Only then can the soul blossom and be developed. If we are asked that we remain calm, be in perfect harmony, what is the general line that we want to take? This harmony is being upset because of the battle of life. So let us flee. That is the first reaction and that, that is the first quickest and safest way that we feel is open before us. Arjuna was trying to take that way. But what does the Lord say? What is the third command? Tasma the Yuddhasva Bharata Verse eighteen he repeats the command of fighting. You can't flee away. The battle of life, how beautifully expressed by Sri Krishna Prem, must be won and not run away from. Have you taken that solemn resolve? Only then you can take this path. Yes, I will fight. I must win. So the entire Bhagavad Gita asks us to take up this challenge, to take up this fight and win this battle. If we take it on the surface, you can say that it is warmongering. There is indulging by Sri Krishna in this Bhagavad Gita. He is inciting Arjuna to war. But Arjuna wanted the safe way of peace. Oh, how noble was Arjuna. He said, I won't fight. I will better beg my food. I leave everything instead of killing my kinsmen. Was that, that a very noble venture on the part of Arjuna? But why does the Lord ask him to fight, fight over again? The smad yuddhasva bharata. And Sri Krishna Prem reminds that battle of life must be won and not run away from. If we are prepared to take up arms, see to the last, clinch the issue, only then we should lend our ears to the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. It is not an easy path. We must completely take up the challenge, fight it out to the last. And after that, then the true path aims at a detachment from the lower manifestations, as I already told you. But how to detach? by a progressive union with the higher. The entire sadhana is on one side detachment and the side attachment. 
in the words of the Bhagavad Gita, in the words of Patanjala Yoga Darshana, it is Abhyasa and Vairagya. This dual path. On one side we must detach ourselves, separate ourselves from the lower manifestations. And by practice, this is called abhyasa, get ourselves attached, progressive union with the higher. And for that, we must take to this knowledge first of all. After taking up the fight, Taking this resolve, yes, I must fight to the finish. Thereafter, you must try, as I told you last time, you must get hold of the first streak of light. We want to get out of this darkness, out of this turmoil. The union with the buddhi is the preliminary step to the utterly transcendent state of the goal. And therefore, after giving many other instructions, if you are interested in noting them down, concentrating, that is, you should meditate on them, In verse 30, the Lord asks the seeker, Arjuna, all of us, Natvam Shochitu Marhasi. Don't grieve, don't lament. We don't want to take up arms, we always look back. Oh, there are my own people. What will happen? What will be the effect of all this war and fight and everything? Natvang shochitu marahasi. And the very next verse he says, Na bikam marahasi. Don't tremble. Don't be negligent of the duty that is before you. We always feel diffident over and over again, even after taking the resolve. How beautifully this is the true role of the teacher. He finds that, yes, he says, I shall take up the arms, I shall fight. Again he quails. Again he is shrinking from his duty. He is trying to escape. Nabikam pito marahasi. Why do you trembling? You must stand direct, stand steadfast. And after that, again in verse 38, Tato Yuddhaya Yudjasva, the fourth command, when he gets the imperative mode. That is, Arhasi, it is not proper, it is not proper, there is no direct command. But incidentally, the Lord asks us, uh, don't get nervous, don't lament, don't grieve. Again he gives another push. Yuddhaya Yudhjasva. Guard up your loins for the fight. But to guard up the loins and for the fight, when will that time come as just Sri Krishna Prem has pointed out, the utterly transcendent state of the goal, when I shall reach that. In verse 45, you find a clue to that. It is a wonderful verse, I am not giving it in details today, but you can note it down. The Lord asks us that if you really want to be 
free from all turmoil. Nistraigunyo bhavarjuna. Please remember, this is the very ultimate goal. The details of which we get after the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the last portion. I hope you have already pointed out to you that the journey of the soul towards its goal according to the Bhagavad Gita is three-tired. The first state to be achieved will come at the end of the second chapter that is known as Thita Pragya. That the first level we must attain. The second is the state of Bhakta about which we will find a description in chapter 12. And the last is Guna Thita. Completely being free from all gunas that will come at the very end. Nistrai gunyo bhavarjuna. Become completely free from three gunas. I am not giving any details, but please remember all these are connected. How you can become nistrai gunya? In the very verse, you will get the clues. If you can become nirdvanda, but how can I become nirdvanda? If you become nitta sattvastha, but how can I become nitta sattvastha? If I can become nirjoga kshema, but how is it possible to become nirjoga kshema? Only if we become atma bhan. So, kindly find out, I am not explaining all these terms today. The main clue is given that if one wants to go beyond all the three gunas, he must become atma bhan. Because only the Atman, only the Self is beyond the three gunas. All other things in the world, Whatever things we find in existence is full of three gunas. These three, two things, these must be instilled in our heart. This is what the Gita teaches us. You will find the verse later on. Natadasti prithibhyamba dibi deve shubapuna. Sattvam prakriti jair muktam jade trivirgunai. Not only in this world, prasibhyam, dibi in the heavens, even among the gods, there is nothing, not a dusty. Jat evi trivirgunair mukta. So these three gunas in here, in every Everything, whether in this world or the other world or in the gods or among men, everywhere. This is the one essential thing to be remembered. And the other side is that Gune Bhascha Param, one which is beyond the Gunas. Only he is beyond the Gunas. Nothing else is beyond the Gunas. So Atmaban is the clue given in verse 45 here. But I am already entangled in this process. In this process means in this movement, as we discussed in our previous talks. So we are already entangled. So what should be the first step to get out of this tangle? You have shown me the highest state, Nistra Gunno Bhava. For that you ask me to become Atma Ban. 
but my atma myself is now completely enmeshed completely involved in this process of movement which we call the worldly movement which is known as karma so the next command you will find in verse 47 the sixth command ma karma phala hetur bhu yes you can't get out of karma so krishna we will point out very nicely that everyone is forced to do some form or in some form or other with karma karma you can't get rid of because karma is at the very root of creation so what you should do you can't get out of the movement we foolishly think we can stop the outer movement i shall not talk there is within my power i won't walk i won't use my feet i won't use my hands thereby you can stop the outer movement but what about the inner the gita points out that if you stop the outer movement the inner movement becomes all the more turbulent and thereby it upsets the balance sri krishna prem has very beautifully brought in modern psychologists different views which you can read by yourself and he shows that cessation from action is impossible and the mental states or actions remain unchecked and become more riotous because of the enforced outer activity so the gita unerringly puts the finger on the main malady the main malady is in the mind how can you stop that the first step the lord gives in first 47 as i told you ma karma phala hetur bhu you have got this entanglement because you are very greedy greedy about what what this action will pay me back what i am going to get out of it this greed for the fruits of action the ma karma phala he turbhu first give up your desire for the particular gain or result that you will get out of it but at the same time the injunction is mate sangostva karmani as i have just pointed out if you try to stop your outer activities that is called akarma don't be attached for akarma don't try to stop the outer actions in the wonderful language of sri krishna frame that will lead to a more riotous manifestation of the inner psyche and therefore here the real teaching starts yoga stak kuru karmani this is what is being taught by the teacher or the lord seated in the heart the method is karma su kaushalam this skill 
This skill means you must do all karmas by become yogastha. I'm just hearing this term yogastha. What does this yogastha mean? What does the Gita teach? What is that yoga? Sitting in a particular posture, doing some pranayama, taking recourse to samadhi. The teaching of the Bhagavad Gita is buddhi yoga. If you are interested, you can read Srimata Nidvan's wonderful writings about Buddhi Yoga, it is in English. A friend has published his English writings in one volume, you will find it there. This is, by the way, those who are interested in getting light about this Buddhi Yoga can also get some light there. But here, Sri Krishna Prem also has discussed at length, we shall take it up later on. But first, therefore, the Lord gives the command, eighth command in verse 49, Buddhau Sharanam Anvicha. This is the Kaushala, Buddhau Sharanam Anvicha. This is the ray of light about which I have just referred. The first ray of light within me to take me out of the gloom. We started today's discourse about the sense of desolation, utter gloom. But there is a pencil of ray, faint ray of hope in every human heart. Buddhau Sharanaman Nitya Durena Chavaram Karma Buddhi Yoga Dhananjaya So here he first pronounces the word Buddhi Yoga. And you take refuge in your buddhi. What is that buddhi? Sri Krishna Prem here. When you get the book, or those who have already got the book, you must try to find out what is the nature of that buddhi. So that buddhi he discusses at length. And he says this is the charter of action that is given by the Lord. You must find out who will lead you, who will give you direction of your karma. And this direction of the karma you must give the reins at the hand of buddhi. We have already done the Kathopanishad here. I hope you remember that teaching. Buddhintu sarathim vid. Make that your charioteer. But here the mind has taken up the reins. Janamano no vidhiyat, you will find at the end of the second chapter. Tadasya harati pragyam. The mind takes us out, prompted by the senses. Janamano anu vidhiyate. As the senses ask us, Eat this, taste this, see this, and immediately the mind runs after that. It gives its assent, and we have no control over that. But if we can really take refuge in that steady light of the buddhi, this is the first step. No, as soon as you ask me to go out, I am not going out. Let me really think over it. This is called deliberation. This is called discrimination. So Buddha Sharnamanicha has this particular hint behind it that you must try to get hold of the Buddhi. What is this Buddhi? So this Buddhi Krishna Prem has very beautifully pointed out, we shall take up next day, that this buddhi is not something which is wavering, changing, like the mind. But it is 
Nishchayatmika, which takes a definite point of view. But here the Gita's buddhi even goes further. Buddhi unerringly gives you the light that is within. That is, it gives the illumination or true knowledge. So this illumination is the most important thing. This illumination comes through the buddhi. So buddha sharanam anvichya. This is the clue which has to be developed. And in the very next command, that is the ninth. It is linked up that with that I am closing. Yoga Yajujaswa. So this is the yoga which the Bhagavad Gita teaches. That is Buddhi Yoga. Yoga Yajujaswa. Please read out the entire verse by yourself. Buddhi Jukto Jahatiha Ubhe Sukrata Dushkrite. Then you will go beyond Sukrata and Dushkrita, once you can tune yourself to Buddhi. This is the most essential teaching and its culmination you will find at the end of this second chapter when you attain the state of Sthita Pragya. There the light of Pragya, illumination through knowledge becomes steady that throws light in every action. Because action must be there. Movement will be there. You can't get out of it. But that calm and steady light of the buddhi will be guiding your movement. The movement will be there. You will be involved in the movement. Arjun is in confusion. This movement has completely confused him. It comes to every human being during the time of crisis or when a problem faces us. But you can get over the problem. You can get out of it. If we take recourse to buddhi, buddha sharanaman vichya. We must try to probe into the nature of the buddhi by and by. As we proceed with the guidance of the Lord who is seated in every human heart. Thank you.